All right, good day, all. It is Comics Camp 2020 at MerrickBennett.com. I'm Merrick Bennett. Got my pencil, got my pen and eraser too, but we'll start with pencil. Then we'll move into ink and erasing if we get a chance with our pie process. And if you have some paper and a pencil, let's draw. Um, so today I'm working on a lot of different projects, but I thought it's been kind of nice just taking these Monday live draws to kind of doodle and use our imagination and do something a little off the beaten path. So there's something we've been doing around here a little bit. Just gonna draw sort of a lazy curling line that moves around here. That could be maybe a, a coastline, right? And we could have water down here. And we could have land up here. And I love how these simple, simple little lines like this with a little imagination added in and a little bit of time and attention can become really complex, interesting terrains for our imaginations to inhabit. So what I'm thinking today is maybe this will be, I have a little bump up here. You can find a little bump up in your line and we'll make it sort of a little cove. And we'll just put a little, little river coming up. Sort of wiggle it up there and let that river sort of trail off for now. We can finish it off later. We'll figure out where it goes later. But that'll be a river coming out to our water. Right. Your line's probably going to look different from my line, of course, because you squiggle a little differently. But if you squiggle across in some interesting, unplanned way, you'll get an interesting coastline. Then our imagination can make sense of it. So let's put a little village down here, maybe right at on either side, uh, let's take this side. And I like to do just really simple little houses to start with. Maybe we'll give them little roofs. And you, know, you could do little sides if you want. And maybe just like a window and a door. Little dot, little line. Maybe this one has two windows and a door or a window up there. You, know, you can vary it up and give yourself a little village here maybe four or five houses, that's all. And then we're gonna take those houses and we're gonna draw them back a little bit. So off the top of say this house, I'll just draw a little line going back. Right? And then I'll draw another line down. And you see what that does? It makes the house sort of deeper in space because this, this river and this coastline are going through space. And now it makes, instead of a flat house, you only see one side of, now we see two sides. We can. Pull that back like that. We can pull this bottom back and then this back, and the bottom here. We'll try that a couple more times and we'll give these houses some shape. Now notice how this one's, it's so close, it's gonna tuck in behind that house. And that's kind of cool too. That gives us a sense of shape. And this one, we can make a little shorter. Maybe this one, let's make going in the other direction. That's kind of cool. That kind of bumps them up against each other. Maybe this one goes in that direction. There you go. And if you want to put little chimneys on there, you can. Of course, there could be other houses with like round roofs. I like I like little mushroom houses too. Right? We'll give it a round roof. Maybe that's a thatched roof and these are wooden roofs. I don't know. This is a nice little village. And we'll why don't we tuck a couple other houses up between these houses? Make some of them going back this way. See that we can use those same sort of we're, we're kind of implying the houses back there. We're not really drawing them. We're just sort of showing the roof. And then you think maybe there's something underneath. I can even make another little roof here, tuck that in. Let's make a roof here and make it going the other way. Maybe this one has two chimneys. We just vary it up. And that's starting to look like a, a tightly knit little village there clustered in around the river. And I noticed there's like some, there's some waterfront here. So maybe we'll bring a dock down. Maybe another dock here. And we'll give them little legs coming off the bottom. And I think if you can see the legs on this side, you're not going to see the legs on this side, right? That doesn't quite look right, having the legs going off to the side, at least not this kind of dock. So maybe I'll just leave that dock. I could do little lines along it to make it a little darker and easier to see. Maybe this one, we just see the legs on the front and not really on the side couple lines along the top and there we go. There's some docks coming down. And maybe there's some boats pulled up on the shore. Now these boats are just gonna look like, they're pretty far away. So they're just gonna look like little 
points like that, little curved lines that have points on either side. And you go curves around and another one curves around and there's a front and a back to that boat. All right. Now this is uh, probably if, if we have a village of any size and this village seems to be getting bigger as the more roofs we draw, maybe some narrow roofs, maybe some wide roofs by the waterfront, that might be a warehouse or something. Small roofs, big roofs, maybe a tower. What about a tower coming up here? We'll put a top on that tower. We'll put a pointy roof on it and maybe some windows. That's kind of cool. Let's do another tower over this side, maybe a little shorter. Maybe without the roof on top, maybe like uh, an umbrella on top. So we'll give it a line, a line and a curved top. There we go. It's getting a little fantastical, having a big umbrella up there. Maybe this, maybe right along this river, let's give ourselves, I'm thinking there's a castle here. And I'm thinking if I were to build a castle next to a river, I would give myself a hill with a cliff coming down to the river. So let's do that. Let's give ourselves a cliff here. That can be a rocky cliff. And there could even be, let's even put like a little uh, ledge along that cliff and a couple houses up there. Right. You can even put them tucked into the cliff maybe. And you can kind of make up your village as you go here. We'll give another house going this way. I want that tower to be in front of it. So we'll have to give a couple more houses behind it. And I'm leaving a little space around that tower. So it still looks like it's up in front of those houses. If this feels like if you're Roofs feel like it's getting a little messy and clustered. That can be kind of nice for an old, old village, right? Maybe a couple round roofs out here, curved round roofs straight across the bottom, a little bottom of the house there with a couple windows and doors. Let's put like a round window in that one. There we go. We can just kind of make it up. And all these roofs, you know, you may go back and decide all the roofs are going to be colored or lined in, right? I'm going to leave them white for now. We'll get into those details later. We have to build this castle. I'm going to bring this cliff out a little bit. There's a pencil here. And let's put this castle, let's give this castle like some tall side walls here. It'll be straight across the top. But I'm thinking what we'll do for that top is we'll make it castle-like, which means it has these crenellations, these little teeth coming off the top here, right? There's the start of our castle. There's gonna be a lot more to it than that because we can build up from that one. That's the main wall, that's the main keep. And we can do that same little trick, crenellations across the top, and we can build this up as far as we need to. If your crenellations don't quite work out on the sides, don't worry, they can be of different lengths, but I try to make them kind of regular. We can build this one up as far as we need to. It's not a very central tower. Let's put a couple little crenellations there. Maybe there's a, maybe there's like a, a pointed roof. So we'll do a little triangle. We'll bring it back and give the back side of it. Maybe that's a place for a nice round stained glass window of some sort. There we go. And maybe on this side, we build it up to the side and then put a little tower on there as if they added that on, see that? They can make that have some support lines there. They added that on. We'll make it come up a little wider here and we'll put the crenellations on. And maybe this one has a nice tall roof here and a couple windows. Now here's what I like to do with these huge windows. I'll give a little line for the side and I'll blacken in the inside. Although those are big windows, most of these windows are probably going to be more like the size of these house windows. So we can put them all over in different places in the tower just to let a little light in. And maybe there's a doorway, maybe a big arch to enter. Now we're going to use that same way on this arch that we did on these windows. Uh, it looks like it's on this side of the tower. So we would see this side of the arch. We'll give a doubled line there. Right. And then maybe we can go straight across here. And those can be the bars. And maybe there's a big gate there. Maybe one door is open. Maybe one door is closed. Looks like lots and lots of giant wagons and horses could ride through there. Maybe there's like a, a 
flag flying from the tower here, or a couple flags. And I'm thinking, well, let's see, probably there's a little pathway coming down this way. Maybe it goes side to side to side, and it goes down to the village. We're starting to get a sense that there's like the village and people can go up to the castle and come down. Maybe we'll put a couple houses in here. We can do these houses a little faster now if we really practice them. Little triangles connected to the ground, but they're built into the cliff side here. I kind of like that. How they're built into the cliff side. Double triangles connected together. Actually, we're not going to see this hill at all at this point. We've just built our village right up to the gates of the castle. Kind of interesting how that works. It's like, as we draw, time's going by and the village is growing and growing. Maybe we can tuck a little house behind the cliff here. A couple little houses, as if the village goes around behind the hill. Now, you know what we need? This is kind of cool. We have the river coming down, we have the water. We're gonna have some boats coming and going, I think. Um, and what we could probably do is build a wall around this just to protect it, just in case. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give myself a tower out here, sort of like the, the castle tower. I'll give it a couple tooth-like crenellations at the top. Maybe there's like a, um, Let's do the top of a wall right down near the shore. And we'll bring that over. Then we'll give ourselves another tower here and we'll kind of connect these. Now that's gonna be a wall that I just draw the bottoms, connect the bottoms, connect the middles. That's gonna be a wall that we can see a little bit of the top of. So we'll double that line and that'll be the top there. Here, we're just looking at the front of it. Let's give ourselves a little doorway into that tower. Let's give ourselves a wall going back behind the hill. And maybe there's crenellations on that. Maybe that's the walkway right along the top there. And maybe there are houses built right up against it. That's gonna be kind of cool. I'll just tuck in those triangles with their roofs going right back to the wall really close together, like it's a really close little uh, street along the wall there. All these houses kind of look alike. Each one's a little different. There we go. That looks like a really close, tight little village. And maybe there's a couple huts outside the wall. Maybe they're just starting to build. So we'll give these round thatched roof huts here. Two little windows in each built right up against the wall. There must be a gate there. Let's give ourselves a gate on that side. And here, what's this? Is it open on the, maybe we're actually gonna bring this wall right around in front of these houses. Oh, this will be cool. We're gonna have to move those boats. I'm gonna move those boats and at each of those docks, I'm gonna give us a little gateway and that can be like the waterfront right there. A little gateway. Maybe we need a small tower here right on the shore of the river. And the wall can go back. There we go. All right. Now we've really got a tightly knit little town here. Of course, if we go back in and we ink it, it's going to be really easy to see. But if this is like a planning page, then I can just work in pencil and keep making changes and stuff. Let's put some ships in here. So I'm thinking simple ship. We'll do a side view. We'll just go have a straight line across for the top. Maybe we'll make the back straight down and the front sort of angled back because the ship plows through the waves that way. Let's give it two masts. It's okay for the mast to come up in front of the shore there. In fact, maybe we'll move this whole part of the shore just to open up this bay a little bit. We're allowed to do that here as we plan our little site. And we'll have to decide if this one is We'll give it two crossbars on each mast, and then we can bring down the sail, which is sort of rectangles hanging off those crossbars. Let's give ourselves a triangular sail in the front, triangular in the back. I guess we have another mast there after all. And you can give yourself little windows here, and this is a ship. 
sailing into the harbor. So let's give it some trailing lines here, just arriving. And maybe we'll do another little ship down here, sailing after it. Smaller ship, one mast, sail on either side. Maybe you can even see people in it. That's sailing right after it. And you know, if you want to start adding lots of different ships and things in here, you can add fun stuff like this. We can mix up eras here. We can do sort of a rounded top and a little periscope and have a submarine coming through here. Give it a fin at the back. Maybe that submarine's supposed to be there. Maybe it's lurking around, spying on ships coming in. I don't know. Maybe there's a little ship coming out to meet this one. So we'll give it oars, a couple people in it. Maybe a couple, maybe a bank of rowers in there. Maybe they have a sail, but if they're going against the wind, they're using oars. Oh, look at that. There's another dock over here, isn't there? That means we're probably going to want to build houses along the shore and huts and our village just grew again. Right? We're starting to get a real port city here. We can repeat these houses over and over with little variations to get all sorts of different architectures in here. Maybe there's even some buildings that are kind of taller up here that have been built after, built right up against the wall. We can build it out in any direction here. All right, so the other thing I wanna think about with this city as it grows and grows and ships are coming and going here is um, we could put an island out here. I also wanna think about the landscape around it. So maybe we need, um, I'm thinking there's probably a road coming out of this gate, probably winds through these houses and maybe heads off up here into some fields maybe. Let's do some fields out here. So we'll give it some sort of rounded, gentle terrain. And then we can do like lines along this field that way and furrows along this field that way. And you start to get this sort of feeling that there's some landscape back there. We'll tuck that behind. I won't quite let the lines connect. So there's a little bit of like a faint misty halo around the things I want to stand forward here. That's subtle, but it'll help. We'll give maybe lines at a different angle on this hill. See how I don't connect those lines right to the tower? I keep that sort of white halo around the tower that lets your eye see the tower and the wall and not get confused with those lines. Right? And you can do that you know, as far as you want. Those hills can go, you can even put little farmhouses up there because we know we can put a little triangle, a little roof, triangle, a little line going back and it becomes a house. Maybe there's like a little pole with another little flag like those up there. And you get a sense of sort of the land going back. Let's do like, let's do a couple fields on this one. So we'll put a line going down and we'll put these lines going across and these lines going at a different angle. And it'll look nice and kind of carved up and bucolic and pastoral. Couple little houses tucked in there. All right, so on this side, it seems to be fields. I'm not sure what's going to be here, but maybe there's another field here. Sort of gently curving fields. Maybe some orchards up against the walls there. All right, on this side, I'm thinking, let's put a, a forest on this side. This will be more the wild side. All right, so let's bring, maybe we'll start it a little ways up here. And here's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna draw like a line that's the bottom of the forest. And then I'm gonna draw sort of gumdrop bumps on top of it. And those are the tops of the trees. They can be pointy, they can be rounded, they can be a mix. We continue that line a little. And then under each one of these, I'm gonna give him a little dark tree trunk dot. Now this seems like a lot of work to draw every tree in the forest, but watch what happens here. Put those little tree trunk dots on there. 
And then I don't have to do that for every tree behind this line. So I can do some bumps of various heights, pointiness, roundness, maybe even some rough bumps, right? And I can tuck those back. And the cool thing is it's like your imagination does the work for me because you look at these tree trunks here and you see this as like the top and the trunk of the tree. And then every bump behind it, you kind of fill in, oh, that's a tree with a trunk on it, but I don't have to draw those trunks. So I can create this forest that's kind of a little blobby. Maybe I want to sort of blob shape it out and actually follow that shape then, right? And maybe I want to have another arm of it coming out here, a little below. And I'll draw every tree trunk on the front of that arm. And maybe I'll put like an extra tree or two over here, right? So it looks a little ragged, that edging. I'll put those tree trunks on there. And then I'll connect these. I'll bring this line up here, tuck these down. Maybe that's where the, there's like a little field, a little, opening here, maybe there's like a road into the forest or something. Oh, I know there can be a road going up in here through the forest. That's the forest path. It seems to be going up into the hills, doesn't it? Maybe we do, maybe like these lines kind of go up as we go. Continue that front line, do these back lines, and I can do this a little faster. Once I establish that that texture of the forest, I can kind of bump these in. This is like drawing scales on a dragon, right? Or uh, scales on a fish or curly woolly bumps on a monster or something. All these little bumps, your eye just sees it as texture and it's gonna see it as sort of a landscape. Maybe every now and then there's a really tall one, right? Here and there, but mostly all kind of the same. Now, if I were going to ink this, I probably wouldn't do every single line. I'd probably get a feel for how large the trees are, how tall they are, and then I'd leave a lot of this blank. And when I come in to ink it, I can just, you know, live ink that forest. I'll put a couple more trees in here. But if you do that extra work of doing every trunk on the front line, then your imagination can fill in what's in there. And, you know, we could even we could even give ourselves like a hill here or a mountain or a couple mountains, right? Tuck them in there. And then we could do as many trees. Those could be all wooded and it'll look really, really cool. Like you could just wander into that forest and lose yourself in it. And maybe, just maybe, somewhere up here, we'll give ourselves sort of a forest line and we'll give ourselves like a rocky point. Maybe there's like fangs, rocky points coming out of these mountains. And we'll do the trees all up around them. And that'll be really striking. Maybe there's even like caves up there on these rocky points. Ooh, that's intriguing. And they can see the castle and the castle can see them. And as we're drawing those, we're starting to wonder like, what's the relationship between these ships? Who's coming and going on these boats? Who lives in this forest? How do they relate to these farmers? Why is there a wall and so on? We can kind of start to create this a story that goes with this land. And maybe there's, maybe out here in the forest, there's even like a couple little roof lines. Maybe there are houses out there, or maybe there's somebody else living out there. Let's see, let's put a little bridge over this river right here. We can put a little archway over it. And then this is a very simple Roman style bridge, then a little line going up. And let's do a second little line like that. Let's do that even a little simpler. Let's make that even simpler. Let's put a straight line across and another straight line. Now that's the top of the bridge, right? Now we'll put a curve going from one side of the river to the other. And we can't see the other side, so we'll just kind of darken under there and let that go over the river. Now we can also kind of draw the sides there. And if you wanna put, make this have bricks or something, we can do that. And maybe this road tucks around behind the hill here. And maybe this road, let's bring it up around and into the forest here. And it goes around, oh, it goes right in front of that rock with the 
caves in it. Look at that. There we go. And it goes around past that house and on into the forest. And maybe there's also a road that comes around this way and follows the coastline. And maybe, just maybe, there's like a little house along here. One little house that watches the ships come and go. There we go. So we give ourselves that triangle, line back, two lines back, and the back of the house. Let's try that again. Triangle, I'll go back in the other direction. Two lines back, the back of the house. And let's darken that triangle. Bring some walls down, give it some windows or something. There's two little houses there. And maybe let's put a little person. Let's put a little horse. So I'll just do like a little blob with legs going forwards and backwards. Let's put the head on this side. A little person on it. Maybe a tail. A little head on that person. Let's give them a little cloud of dust behind them. Maybe a shadow under them. So they're like roaring along, running along that road, maybe bearing a message from the village out along the shoreline. Now this is getting interesting. There's stuff happening here. Ships coming, messengers coming and going. You can add other messengers arriving along this road. You can add, let's put a toll booth on there. So on this road into the forest, maybe there's a little gate. We'll do the same thing we did with the, with the um, bridge. We'll put an archway over the road it goes from one side of the road, up and over the road, and lands on the other side. We'll put a little crenellated wall there. Maybe they're starting to build a wall out here. Here we go. We'll erase the road here. We'll give that, maybe we'll bring that up and make it a tower like the castle. Interesting toll booth here. Let's double the bottom, the inside, and we'll just darken that inside. No, it's just a gate, it's not a toll booth. Give it some windows, a couple more flags. You know, I just noticed something. If the wind's blowing this way, those flags should be going that way, shouldn't they? Consistency, we just figured something out about the weather in this place. The wind blows off the sea. And we'll fix all the flags, although there might be some turbulent weather and winds coming from different directions here. We can go in and finish all these bumps of trees and make these hills really woody. As many tree bumps as you want, as detailed as you want it to be. Or maybe this is a barren slope here. Maybe the trees only come up so high. It's great. We're nearing about a half hour here, so I'm going to... I'm gonna take a break from this and get back to my other projects. But I can always come back to this and draw more and add more onto it. We've kind of gone from a little fishing village to a whole city with a castle. I kind of feel like this castle up here has a little telescope on the tower and maybe some little people looking into those hills. Let's just add the back, the very background. I'm thinking there's mountains back here the river goes up into some real mountains here. Let's add some mountains back on this side. Once again, I'm not going to draw the line right through the castle. I'm gonna leave sort of a little white halo around the castle. Wow, that looks like a really deep valley now. There's gonna be some hills before the mountains. Looks like a really deep valley that this river comes down through. Maybe there's other towns up there. Um, maybe you can always add a little surprise too. I like to add like maybe a little, little tiny giant head sticking over those mountains. And give it two little horns. Maybe two eyes. Maybe they're looking down at that city. There we go. I'm not sure if this giant is friendly or not. We can find out if we draw this picture again and show what the giant does when it comes to the town. We'll put little claws coming over the mountains like that. And the other hand has three little claws. It's just like peeking over. Maybe the giant's just keeping an eye on things. 
just peeking over the mountains there. And that gives us a sense of depth too and real scale. You may wanna come in here and add some flowy, swishy watermarks for your river. You may have lots more details on the waterfront here. I like to add lots of waves because that really makes the water. Maybe all along the shore, we add some wave lines. That really makes the water look like water, it makes it look different from the ground, which is a very different texture. You can add a few trees here and there, maybe some trees by these houses. If they want some shade. Maybe they're planted in a nice row along this road. See how they go in front of the road there? Because they're, oh, they're on either side of this road. It's gonna be a nice shaded road there. And so on and so on. Just kind of let your, this is a good exercise to have. Just kind of let your imagination roll. You might add some creatures in the ocean here. I'll add a little whale here, just sort of a, a blob shape with a tail. Let's give it a wide whale tail that goes to the side like that. All right, you can get that effect. Let's, I'll show you. You can get that effect by like bringing the teardrop up and then giving it a fin on either side and then erasing right there. And that becomes a whale fluking and spraying. And you have all sorts of actions. You can have flying creatures up here. Maybe we'll just put a few birds in here flying around the castle. Maybe it's a big flock of birds, or maybe they're not birds, you know, maybe there's something else flying up there. You can decide. And the other cool thing that you can do, once you've done this kind of a picture and you have uh, this, this sort of entire city and farmlands and forests and mountains going, you can always, always work with a friend or next time you come to sit and draw, put another piece of paper next to this. Here we go. And you can tape it on or not, and you can just kind of continue that. Now we know we're heading into the forest here, but what's in the forest? Maybe another town, maybe another castle, maybe something altogether different. You can continue the coastline and maybe the coastline does something interesting. Maybe there's like something coming out into here. Maybe there's another bay there that another town is around. You can come over onto this side and continue that farmland. You could go up and go into the skies. You can go down and go into the other side of the ocean or something. Um, but just adding that paper on and just keeping your pencil moving. Um, it's okay to just make it up, you know, as you go along. And um, it's actually really, really, really good relaxing practice to do this. And now I can go back to, you know, I'm working on all these projects like, um, how to draw the Loon Tunes. I'm, I'm doing all those how to draw pages and I'm working on my, where is it? The uh, Jeremiah Crocker project, which is looking at gravestones in my town here in Henniker and the Freeman Colby books and all those. Um, but every now and then I can stop and I can just kind of work on my landscape and just let my imagination roam around here. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for pieing with us, um, even though we just penciled here. If you wanna prepare this to share with people, you might go back over it with ink when you get a chance. Um, and remember, you can always, always make changes as you ink, make additions, make subtractions. Just keep your imagination flowing and see what happens as you make these pictures. Um, head on over to merrickbennett.com. I'll do daily updates this week. This is kind of the August grab bag. So we're gonna have lots of projects sh getting shown and how to make books and how to make a couple mini formats too. And if you wanna become a patron, you can join over at patreon.com slash Merrick Bennett. Thank you so much patrons for making this whole summer of comics camps possible. And let's keep drawing and see where we end up. Have a great week, everybody. See you soon.